ready to film a um, beginner's journal making workshop and I decided I wanted some handmade paper to make for my covers and I needed something quite simple and I wanted something that had a fair bit of white space in it because I'm using a white background so I thought I'd go ahead and show you how I go about doing that it's a really quick and easy background paper so I thought you might like to see what I'm doing and today I'm using um, paper that's a little bit thicker this is 160 GSM paper you can pick that up from any of your office suppliers I'm using it a bit thicker because I want to use it for a cover but you can use ordinary copy paper if that's all you have it will work with that as well um, and you need very few things to do this you're just going to need a couple of colors of your distress inks and today I'm going to be using the cracked pistachio and I'm going to be using the distress oxide in the kitsch flamingo color you're also going to be needing some uh, embossing ink and to go with that I'm using uh, the Ranger Princess Gold embossing powder so that's what I'm going to be using and um, just the little embossing buddy to wipe over our paper just some water and uh, a ruler plastic ruler of some sort and also you're going to need a wide paintbrush now this one measures I'll just tell you it measures one and a quarter inches that's about three centimeters um, and you do need it a bit wide because that's what gives us the effect we need today um, so I've gone ahead and I've damped my dampened my brush down so it's just it's just damp it's not wet but it's just damp okay so it's really easy to get started I'll just move some of this off over to the side to get started I'm going to be using my cracked pistachio and all I'm going to be doing is putting some down on my Teflon craft mat like this A fairly generous amount because I'm doing the whole A4 paper and I'm going to add a little bit of water you don't need too much for this technique just a little bit I'm going to grab my brush that's already damp and I'm just going to pop it in and use it like a paintbrush I guess actually I just want to make sure make sure you have haven't got too much water in your brush I'll just make sure I dab some of that off you don't want too much water in your brush you just want it damp you don't want it really wet and I just realized mine was quite wet so dab it off just to make sure Okay, put my ink on my brush now all I'm going to be doing is just some sweeping motions like this on my paper at the moment I'm doing some just straight up and down vertical lines and my paintbrush is making some nice stripes for me And I'm just doing it randomly on my page not thinking too much about it just adding some vertical and horizontal stripes and I'm making sure in the process that I'm leaving some white space so make sure you leave some white space now if you have your brush too wet like I did earlier it can fill up your space a bit too much it won't give you these nice lines of your paintbrush so just make sure your paintbrush isn't too wet just bring a little bit more in here like that okay I'll show you what that looks like up close so that's what I've got so far now I'm just going to go ahead and dry this off and come back with my kitsch flamingo okay so now I'm going to take my kitsch flamingo and I'm going to repeat this process this time I'm using my oxide ink and I always like to use both the plain and the oxide because I like the way they play together the oxide likes to sit on top and I kind of like that feature so make sure you choose the oxide color you want in your more I guess dominant color that you want to show through a little more 
again I'm just adding a little bit of water to this not too much we don't want it too wet and just make sure you grab your paper towel and just make sure your brush isn't too wet like we did before and I'm just going to put some of this ink on my brush and I'm going to come in here I'm going to come in here where there's white space and I'm going to be adding some of this pink kitsch flamingo in here again I want to be adding horizontal and vertical lines and we want them to cross over too so I want them to cross over the cracked pistachio so it will look more cohesive that way so again don't think too much about it just be quite loose and relaxed in your strokes it's actually a nice relaxing technique to do and as I said earlier I do want to leave a little bit of white space in here and you just keep doing that until you're happy with the effect and I think that's good it's good I kind of like to make sure I've got things crossing over a little bit it's a beautiful pink this kitsch flamingo okay so that's what I have now so I'll just show you that up close now all I'm going to do now is dry that off and I'll come back and show you the next step okay so I've dried that off and uh, as you can see you can use this as is this can be the final step if you'd like and it looks nice just as it is I'm just going to add a little bit more uh, to it and the way I'm going to be doing that is I'm going to add some embossing so I want to take my little um, anti-static pillow first and just wipe it across the surface just like this just wipe that across the surface okay that's to stop my embossing uh, powder sticking where I don't want it to now to add my embossing I'm just going to take my embossing ink and I'm taking my plastic ruler and all I'm going to be doing is popping my ruler across my embossing pad like this like this and then I'm going to be popping it down onto my paper now this looks like absolutely nothing is happening <laughs> and I know it must look like that to you because I actually can't see anything myself so you're not going to be seeing anything happening on camera but it is it's transferring um, just a thin line of embossing which is what I'm looking for and it's not a perfect line which is also what I'm looking for I'd sort of want that you know broken like what we've done with our paintbrush I sort of want a similar effect with these lines now you can see that I'm keeping my lines running in the same direction as I have done my painting with my ink. Now I'm going to come in horizontally and vertically like this and although I can't see where I'm going that's okay because I kind of want these to be a little bit random looking and it doesn't matter if they're not perfectly straight either you know they don't have to be perfectly horizontal and perfectly vert vertical either um, that's fine too we sort of do want a bit of an organic look about it so I'm just going to add some now you're not going to know how this is until you come to emboss it and then once we emboss it if I feel like I need some more you can come back and add more now what you can also do is just emboss the end of your ruler and do some shorter strokes in here as well just to add a bit more randomness and you can sort of do it halfway along okay so let's have a look at what we've got so I'm going to bring in my embossing powder now this is my princess gold 
you can use any color you like and what I'm going to do hopefully you'll be able to see is I'm just going to pop my embossing powder on and can you see those lines starting to appear a bit like magic isn't it <laughs> and I'm just tapping off the excess as I'm going and hopefully our little anti-static pillow has done its job but it doesn't really matter anyway with this technique if you do get embossing powder elsewhere that's fine that's fine and they're looking really good those lines You can see that I haven't got them all perfectly straight. They're certainly not evenly spaced and I actually didn't want them e evenly spaced. And if you're anything like me, I find it hard to be random sometimes. I'm always trying to get things equal and, you know, next to each other. And this way, when you can't see it, it means it has to be random, right? So it's kind of a, a good technique to free yourself up a little bit and be able to be a bit more random about things. So they're looking pretty good. That looks pretty good, I think, so far. So I'll just check that off. Now I'm just going to go and heat emboss that. So I'll show you what I have. That's what I have so far. Now I'm going to want, I've actually managed to do that a little bit too even, even without being able to see it. You see, I can't escape it. But what I'll come in now, I can see them, is I'll put some that are a bit more closer together and maybe a little bit off straight. Um, and I'll show you that when I'm done. So I'll go ahead and heat set this and I'll show you what I end up with. So this is what I've come up with. I've had to add a few extra lines there, as you can see. Um, they were just a little bit too even. And as you can see, I've got some going in sort of not straight directions, like you can see here, they're sort of, you know, a bit crooked. And I think that adds to it. So you can put lines that are closer together, like these ones here. They're closer together, some further apart. The more random you can do it, the better. And it just adds that little bit of shimmer and shine. But if you don't want to use embossing powder, you can always just use ink. I actually uh, made another one here, and this is one I have covered a journal with, and I've just used the Distress Oxide in the Walnut Stain and done a similar thing. Just pop my ruler into the ink, and that way it's easier for you to see when you're obviously using ink, you can see where they are. Um, so you can do that too. You don't necessarily have to use embossing powder, but I like the texture that it adds. So I hope you like that and that you can get some use out of that. Again, play around with colors, um, different um, embossing ink colors, and you can come up with a whole lot of different 